or there's two 5G and normal. Okay, great. Are they open? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Greetings from Malad. And uh, we have our first remote connection. Uh, Mare Keski Corso, who's in Tunala, South Savonia, Finland. And uh, we are going to invite her into this chat, and hopefully she will pick up soon. Let's see what happens. This is going to be double and uh, Duga, right? Duga. No, this is Mari. Mari Kesforsu. As we wait for her to come online, now I have to get my own uh, presence here too, I suppose. Fantastic show. <laughs> Isn't it? Isn't it one of <laughs> Do you want to rock a little bit just to pass the time? <laughs> Give me the ball. Is it? I wish I could play flute. Yeah, no. You should have a better Yeah. <laughs> Somebody started to. That. So that, that's interesting. If you have more than one person here, you get the feedback. Oh, wrong chat. The marriage not picking up yet. The reason why we have to do it this way around is because on Mari's mobile phone, iPhone, there is no ability to start to on air. Mm -hmm. we realized. So this is why we are in this situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Let's turn off the volume here so we don't interfere too much. Hi, Mari. Hey, Andrew. Thanks for joining us again already. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have an audience at the moment of four or five and myself? Three of okay. you can see, maybe if we talk. But uh, uh, it'd be nice if you can tell us a little bit about where you are and introduce yourself also. Remembering that this is uh, recorded, so uh, it'd be good to give some context to yourself. Yes. Hello, my name is Mari Keski Korsu, and uh, I'm sending you greetings from Clearcut uh, Preservation, which is situated here in uh, Tunnilaville in a, a municipality called Sulkava, which is in South Tavonia, Eastern Finland. And uh, in the context of Maland, uh, I would like to show a little bit of image. I don't know how well you can see. But uh, this is clear cut uh, presentation that I, uh, it's a land that I actually own. It is the one size and uh, I got it in 2008 and uh, I declared it then that it is a preservation and there's no uh, forest management uh, allowed in this area and uh, uh, so all the trees here they have growing and you can probably see that 
it's quite a it's like a bush already so a couple of years you won't be able to walk here even because of the of the growing trees and uh, I have also placed the camera uh, here so you uh, just a second I flip the camera that is a game and it takes images of the tree growth in one hour intervals and uh, it has been here since 2010 so I already have thousands and thousands of images from from tree growth so one could say that this like the the longest reality so of, of the world because one he grows about 80 years or a little bit less to become a, a, a tree that can, can be harvested. So we have some time to make it. And, and you have one camera to capture the... Yes, the one. Camera, sort of. Yeah. And I sent a link to Andrew if you want to later look at some footage. Uh, from 2010 and 2011 so it's like um, you can see very easily the seasons change and uh, and of course sometimes the camera uh, gets frozen so the strange images and stuff like that and there already there have been one illegal in this area so uh, when the municipality was uh, working over there in that area, uh, so they accidentally they came also to this side, so they disturbed the peace of the preservation by uh, thinning some of the trees here. But uh, we had a long discussion about that <laughs> later on. And uh, what else could I tell you? Mm. I think I go further to another location. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Yeah. That's nice. There, there, there are some little interruptions every now and then, but, you know. Yeah, that's okay. Yes, uh, I'm now moving a little. And uh, uh, I've been really, because it was a little bit of, of an accident uh, to, for me to own it. And it's also an absurd uh, concept to think about it, that I have land, like we have 2.3 hectares of land. Most of it is forest, but uh, uh, but uh, I mean it's uh, it's not very big amount of land, but still it makes me really uh, think of from quite a philosophical point of view because also it gives you a responsibility of what you do with your land and. Uh, and that has been uh, somewhat my uh, point of view, the clear cut presentation that, that why do we always need to, uh, to manage everything, that why can, can things just uh, be as they are. And I don't know how well you see from here, but, uh, but uh, what I see that it's really like uh, uh, grown not to be kind of reached by people anymore after some time. Uh, and what comes to forestry uh, in Finland, I think it's quite an... Uh, there's quite a lot of forest. And there's no forest that haven't been touched by people. So every... like all the lands in the country and of course in other countries too, but the, they are all managed somehow. And when you have a lot of plants, it means that uh, it has an effect. Uh, and, and with forestry, you can have quite a 
vast effect if you think about, for example, like climate change. And uh, for the past two years or a year and a half, I've been involved in a, uh, in a project, uh, it's a research project by uh, Helsinki University Center for Environment. And it's a, a collaboration between different institutions, but they are researching uh, how the, the forest management, uh, could it mitigate the climate change. And the reason to study this, there are several reasons, but, uh, but the forest, are, of course, they are carbon storage so thing. It matters that three species you are planting, like after you clear cut, you, you are, you are obligated by law to plant new trees. So there's something to think about, like uh, for, and uh, like for example, what type of tree you plant in what type of uh, soil. And uh, I've been more concentrated on the tree species and their uh, albedo effect. Uh, albedo effect means, uh, I mean, it doesn't need to be trees; it can be any surface, but it means the surface's ability to reflect sunlight. And uh, for example, if you plant a lot of birch trees, uh, they uh, reflect more sunlight back to space than for example, spruce trees. So this way, uh, it, the climate change by cooling the, the climate when, when the al albedo effect is big. And uh, I'm sure if there's somebody walking in the forehead. There must be. Terve! Moi, mä täällä pelätä yksinään. Mitä sitä? I'm just talking to Barry Picker is looking at me like, what the... Why? Okay, that's cool. Ah, there was a lesson. Uh, but yeah, but my idea was to, I mean, the albedo I've been working on with many things, but I was also making kind of albedo shields that could be placed in the forests. And this is uh, an albedo shield that I made for this location. It is an, uh, uh, like one square meter uh, space, which would mean that it re reflects like uh, one watt of sunlight back to space. I mean, that is an approximate uh, estimation. But uh, the reason why I want to bring this up was, was of course, like the, this responsibility with land and especially with forest forestry, but also one of the reasons I wanted to tell about this was that uh, that if you look at the, the picture that I placed, I think Andrew placed a link to the notepad, uh, there's a picture from this exact same place and uh, there was this really beautiful spruce uh, forest in this location and I make, made very nice pictures of this shield and whatnot. But uh, this spring, when I came back to this location, I noticed that uh, this whole beautiful spruce tree forest was uh, clear cutted totally. So, just uh, wanted to share this quite uh, brutal view, which really impacted me harshly because uh, this was an important place for me and it doesn't exist anymore so uh, so this is one of the perspectives to forestry as well that uh, because I truly believe that landscapes uh, mold our identities or make us who we are in some ways. So when some places that are important to you are just 
taken away so harshly. And it, I mean, it, it almost seems that it doesn't really matter because it's just economics and, uh, and something that people can get their living out of. So it is not even so much uh, discussed that, uh, that uh, it does has an, have an effect how we see our homes and places that we are living at. Yeah, so I just wanted to show you this a little bit sad view now. Um, I'm not sure if I can hear you. Oh shit. That's it. We muted the audio so that we could uh, look at the view without any noises here affecting what we see on the screen. Okay, that's it. Which is between, and uh, we let it go quite a lot, and it's quite annoying. But uh, yeah. now, now that we have the mic back, is there any questions that people wish to have to Mari? Sure, I can do that. We we have a group of people sitting around at the table here. Ah, okay. I didn't know, know that there were so many people. Yeah, it increased as we went along, actually. <laughs> so, so now you get a view of everybody sitting at the table, whereas previously oh, that's cool. out. Nice. And uh, yeah, so I repeat, does anyone wish to ask something about Mari and her place there in Punala? Uh, I'm curious about the long-term plan. Do you have one for the, uh, your Obviously, letting the um, forest grow, but you have other plans as well. Well, uh, uh, I have had a plan to have um, bees here, just to, to because there's a lot of uh, uh, different kind of uh, flowers, of course, berry flowers and stuff like that growing. So I was thinking that, uh, that I could bring some beehives here, but uh, in terms of the in terms of the forest and forestry, I mean uh, I don't have any other plans than to to have the the camera and not to do anything about it. Basically, I mean not to cut the, in any of these. I mean, it's already quite hard to walk there, so <laughs> I don't know. At some point, maybe I can't get to the camera anymore. But uh, but of course, the one of the like, more like technical plan was to have this online. But I've been planning on that for some time already, and uh, there haven't yet been a nice solution for that. So. You were talking about the preservation project that has anyway to 2018, right? So, is it so? No, sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, maybe I uh, Your clear-cut preservation documentation has a date uh, up until 2080, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that is correct. So I you... Want, yeah, I wanted to take the, the date so that, uh, that it would be like the normal, uh, uh, what is it called, like a round of uh, forest growth, growth to half. So uh, I wanted to have this kind of uh, as a like a symbol mm -hmm. that, uh, that that grow for that time, but <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to cut them. Then maybe I'm not even alive. Or maybe you have to pass it on to another generation of documenters. No? Yeah, I have to. Yeah, that's true. I have to make some uh, paper about that, I suppose. Any other any other questions? If there's not, then we can thank you very much, Kito Spallion, and uh, we can. Uh, I, can I say one more thing, Andrew? Of uh, when you when you go, to, I I heard that uh, you go to see the meet some forest owners, and uh, and you are going to have uh, talks uh, about these issues later on. I I really I would like to try to be 
at least listening to some of those if it's possible remotely. But also it might be an interesting topic for you to ask from people that uh, what they think about the new forest law, which is now uh, going to be... Uh, th there's going to be a new law about forest management in Finland. Well, they are going to change it a little bit, so... Uh, some of the nature con conser what is it? It, um, ecological organizations they think that uh, the law is not uh, enough strict, but uh, many still say, say that at least it's going to the right direction, so that uh, it uh, enables the forest owners to not to do clear cut cuts only, but also to harvest like some trees, not to cut the whole forest at the same time. And uh, this is also something that uh, the researchers also uh, recommend to be done. Okay. Yeah, but thank you very much. It was really nice talking yeah. to you. Oh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> and uh, actually, the, the person who uh, has some forest land, that, or her family does, We'll be here tomorrow, so maybe we can connect you together and you can chat between you. Oh, that's uh, yes. for our family think about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for well, sure. Then, then uh, I help facilitate that tomorrow or the afternoon. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll be online. <laughs> Have a lovely evening and a uh, good summer. <laughs> you too. Have a great time. I wish I was there. <laughs> Bye. Bye.